weather forecasters do the best they can, uh, and we respond to the best information that we have. We are in the process of installing a weather uh, system in the state of New York exclusively. That will be the most sophisticated weather system uh, in the country. Why? Because we make big decisions based on these weather forecasts. The great snow apocalypse of 2015 did indeed fizzle in certain areas. New York City was spared, but Massachusetts may be digging out of this one until opening day at Fenway Park. It once again brings to the fore how clueless we as humans really are about the weather in so many aspects. And when we talk weather, you know what some people will be screeching about, of course. Let's welcome back to Midpoint, president of the Space and Science Research Corp., former White House space program advisor, author of the book Dark Winter, how the sun is causing a 30-year cold spell. John Casey joins us. John, good to talk to you again. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Here we go, John. This just proves to everybody, I think, once again, that Mother Nature is indeed completely unpredictable. Apparently, there was about a 20, 25-mile shift in exactly where the front of the weather was, and that saved New York City. You hate to say it out loud, but when it comes to the weather, when it comes to the planet, we still are kind of shooting in the dark at many times, aren't we? Well, we are. Uh, the good news, of course, is that it uh, could have been much worse uh, for states inland. However, we need to remember that Massachusetts, Rhode Island, uh, still getting pounded heavily with high winds, snow, and uh, the yet to see stories what happens in Maine. So this isn't over by a long shot. And in fact, according to the records we already have accrued, this is certainly a top 10 snow event uh, for the Boston area uh, since records uh, going back to 1935. So this is still a major snowstorm, even though it could have been much worse. There are a tremendous amount of people out there today. I mean, I'm seeing it on social media. I'm seeing it all over the Internet, various sites. People are just steaming, especially in New York, saying you shut down the city for nothing. You cost us money. You made us stay home. It was a complete waste of time. John, don't we have to hold up the hand and ask these people, stop just a second. You do the best you can in a situation like this, because had they not done it, I think that we unfortunately then would have to consider the amount of people that would be placed in immediate danger, having to try to get through the conditions that we've seen on the eastern tip of Long Island and certainly now in Connecticut and Massachusetts. This can be deadly. Absolutely. And we should always appreciate the politicians and uh, community leaders who err on the side of caution. You cannot take that risk with people's lives. And we had hundreds of thousands of school children that were actually scheduled to go to school on Monday. And fortunately, most states and most governors and most mayors decided to scrub that. And uh, that was a good decision. So I applaud the decision. And if we look at the uh, uh, four major climate models that were used, weather models that were used to assess the path, uh, it was looking pretty grim right up until the last moment, and then the storm center shifted slightly enough to spare New York City. But again, uh, Massachusetts, uh, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Maine uh, are still undergoing the uh, very strong effects of a storm which produced up to 75 mile per hour winds, and at least in uh, the area west of Boston produced over 30 inches of snow. Are we, and again, I think in about the minute before we, we take a break, come back, because I want to talk more about satellites and how we actually forecast, though. What we're talking about here, John, is in essence millimeters, if you will, on the map, but we're talking about a very slight weather change. That's impossible to predict in many ways, isn't it? Uh, absolutely is. Uh, we're not there yet. Uh, we're getting close to uh, uh, 100%, but that last 10%, is going to be a long time off in the future and a lot more money to go into weather systems to make them that accurate. Uh, now you talk about money. Uh, very briefly before we break here, how much money are we talking about? <laughs> well, the uh, implementation of a new weather system in New York is going to be probably uh, tens of millions uh, for starters. Uh, but then when you start talking about putting up new weather satellites, you're talking hundreds of millions. All right. Now, that's indeed where we're going to go next. John Casey, please stand by for a couple of moments because we're going to get down to something which really catches a lot of people off guard. And they talk about in a situation like this, the need to stop using an incorrect term about global weather conditions. Certainly what we just had. And let's see if we're still using outdated tech to really predict the weather. 
because remember those old black and white pictures from the NOAA satellites just aren't going to cut it anymore here in the 21st century. That's the other side of the break as Midpoint continues. All right, back to the weather boards with former White House National Space Policy Advisor, space shuttle engineer, and author of Dark Winter. Now, the sun is causing a 30-year cold spell, which I think they're feeling in the Northeast right now, as a matter of fact. John Casey is the author. He joins us. Hey, John, getting back to what happened in the Northeast today, the blizzard of 2015, a National Weather Service meteorologist has apologized for the forecast, basically sending out a tweet saying, my deepest apologies to many key decision makers and so many members of the general public. You made a lot of tough decisions expecting us to get it right, and we didn't. Once again, I'm sorry. Do they have all the tools necessary and the best tools necessary at the National Weather Service to actually forecast the weather, or are they still behind the times a little bit? Well, I regret the apology. It was totally unnecessary, in my opinion. I think everyone takes the uh, status of modern weather forecasting and storm forecasting uh, with a small grain of salt. We have made major improvements since the satellite era began in 1979, and we now have a fleet of weather satellites that constantly monitor most areas of the globe, especially the land surface areas. But uh, yes, we could do with some improvement. Uh, still, especially in the Northeast, you've got a lot of folks up there that are uh, very common sense oriented. They'll take the reports, they'll read the news uh, print, and they'll make their own judgment as well. I'm sure most folks in Massachusetts and uh, Connecticut and Rhode Island are uh, not asking for any apologies right now as they dig out from 20 to 30 inches of snow at 15 degrees temperature. John, I went back and found a U.S. Government Accountability Office report from 2013 that said the potential gaps in weather satellite data is high risk. That's almost two years ago. Are we still working with those older satellites here and we still need to bring those up to speed? Absolutely, we do. It's a very good point. Uh, many of our satellites are approaching their 10-year life expectancy or already beyond it. And even those more current satellites, we're seeing some variations in their uh, signal processing and detection systems that provide a bias, warm or cold, in the effective temperature they measure. So, yes, uh, it's time to replenish the global satellite weather monitoring fleet. Much as we have an infrastructure problem on roads and bridges throughout the U.S., those old satellites have got to have replacements coming along very soon. Is it fair to say that this is just another one of those things that no matter who the president is or the Congress is, this always gets shoveled under the carpet somewhere. You don't really think about it. And until the time comes when we're going to need it, the politicians, the decision makers will look at you and go, hey, we thought everything was working just fine. Uh, exactly. Unfortunately, Washington is not a long-term planning city. Uh, the political parties and the administration don't do a lot of long-term planning. They usually plan on making the president or the Congress look good uh, for a short period of time. Those in the science and engineering communities, however, are very well aware of these limited life systems that we built either on the ground or in space and uh, they need to be upgraded or replaced over time. And unfortunately, like we had a few years ago, we have, have to lose a satellite and cause blackouts in a particular area before the politicians and the administration takes it seriously. And it's irrespective of party. You're absolutely right. John, i got about two minutes left here. People will always say that, look what's happening in the Northeast right now. That's a product of global warming. I can already see you're probably starting to shake your head at this point that it is not global warming because we're talking about cooling. This is what you say. Stop using the phrase global warming in your experience and your research. Use the words global cooling, correct? That's correct. There is no global warming. Global warming ended many years ago. According to the 24 climate parameters we measure and publish in our global climate status report, 15 of those parameters now show global cooling as the trend, and really only three still show a warming trend. And one only has to look back a few years and see the dramatic change that's occurring in the, here in the U.S. and around the world. We've had major brutal snowstorms in four of the last six winters. And look at Boston today. They were confronting the possibility of an all-time snow and cold record, and they just set one last year in the top five. And 2003 
was their number one snowiest uh, snowstorm. So we're seeing uh, three, potentially three of the top five worst snowstorms ever occurring since 2003, which by the way, was when the ocean's temperatures began to drop with the new cold era start. All right, 20 second quick answer. People will say, wait a minute, John, we're told the temperatures around the planet are getting higher by average. What would you say to them? Absolutely not true. Uh, we monitor five global databases, including the one from NOAA that the president quoted in his State of the Union message. If you take into consideration all of them, then we projected and uh, saw a 2014 that was somewhat of a temperature spike, but when you consider it over the last 18 years, it basically is in line uh, with that long 18 years without any global warming. All right, learn more about it with the book Dark Winter that you can get by visiting Newsmax.com slash Dark Winter, how the sun is causing a 30-year cold spell. John Casey, thanks for joining us. We'll talk to you again soon, my friend. Thank you, Ed. All right, and Midpoint will continue.